Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The brutal execution of Jane Boleyn, Anne Boleyn's sister-in-law. Inside the Tower of London, during the Tudor era, there were two queens of England who lost their heads on the execution scaffold that was created. Anne Boleyn would lose her head by sword, but Catherine Howard was not allowed a sword, and the fifth wife would be subjected to the commoner's axe, which was considered a more brutal execution. But there was a woman who, following the execution of Catherine Howard, was brought out to lose her head also. Jane Boleyn was the wife of Anne Boleyn's brother, and she was a lady-in-waiting to many of Henry VIII's wives. But she had been implicated in a scandal that rocked the royal court and saw the king's wife sleep with another man, the king's close friend and courtier. But Jane Boleyn's reputation in history is one which is considered shocking and brutal, and many believed that she was one of the most evil women of the Tudor period. Jane Boleyn was born as Jane Parker, and she was the daughter of the 10th Baron Morley. Through her great-grandmother, she was a distant relative of King Henry VIII, and was his half-second cousin. She was born and raised in Norfolk, where her family were of the upper class, and her father wanted her to go to the royal court for greater prestige and power. At the age of 14, she became a member of Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon's household, and she would also go to the field of the Cloth of Gold, summit in France when Henry VIII met the French king. Jane was said to have been attractive, and she got involved in the court entertainment and masquerades, but in 1525 she married George Boleyn, the brother of Anne Boleyn, who would go on to marry King Henry VIII. Anne was not at this time involved with the king, but she was at the royal court, and when Jane and George married, they were gifted Grimston Manor in Norfolk by the king, and Jane became known as Vice Countess Rochford. Jane would continue to rise and benefit from the rise of the Berlins, especially when Anne Boleyn was being pursued by the king. Jane was gifted luxurious items, and they carried out large building projects on their home. But the marriage was one which was not happy. It's believed that George was not interested in his wife, and he lived a wild lifestyle. It was said by a contemporary that George ran wild, deflowering women and forced windows, claiming that he had many marital affairs behind the back of his wife. But when Anne Boleyn married Henry VIII, Jane was now a royal sister-in-law of the Queen, and she would also be the aunt of the future Queen Elizabeth I. But Anne Boleyn and Jane did not get along, and Jane could have been jealous of Anne when she became Queen, but she would unite with her to banish one of Henry VIII's mistresses, but when the king found out about Jane's involvement, he banned her from court for some months. Following the 11-year marriage of Jane Boleyn and George Boleyn, the Boleyns would fall from grace. Henry VIII was frustrated with Anne, and he was infatuated with a new lady, in the form of Jane Seymour. But Henry VIII ordered Cromwell, his chief adviser, to get rid of his second wife, and with this, Jane's husband George was implicated in charges, along with Anne Boleyn. He was accused of sleeping, with his sister, and George would later be executed, and he was beheaded on Tower Hill. Some over the years have claimed that Jane Boleyn was a woman who testified against her own husband to get revenge upon him. She was a bitter woman, but it's not confirmed whether she did this or not. Many believed that Jane was a wicked woman who turned against her husband. But one historian wrote how, Jane Rochford found herself dragged into a male storm of intrigue, innuendo and speculation. For when Cromwell sent for Jane, he already had much of what he needed, not only to bring down Anne and her circle, but to make possible the king's marriage to Jane Seymour. Faced with such relentlessness, incessant questions, which she had no choice but to answer, Jane would have searched her memory for every tiny incident that occurred to her. Jane had not been quick to tell tales, but she had a buckled under the pressure of the relentless questioning, and it was her weakness under interrogation that gave her future detractors, happy to find a scapegoat to exonerate the king from the heinous charge of callously killing his innocent wife, the ammunition to maintain that it was her evidence that had fooled Henry and destroyed Anne and George.'
As mentioned, George Boleyn would lose his head on Tower Hill on the 17th of May 1536 in front of a huge crowd. He spoke to the crowd and alongside him were four others who were executed for their alleged involvement with Anne Boleyn. It is not known whether Jane Boleyn was there to see her husband lose his head, or whether she was a witness inside the Tower of London when her sister-in-law Anne lost her head. But she was affected by the fall of the Boleyns, as the land owned by her husbands were forfeited, and Jane was then sent away from court for some months to secure her finances and position. She was allowed a good pension, but she later returned to the royal court to act as a lady-in-waiting to Jane Seymour, the king's third wife. But she was allowed a room inside of the royal palaces, and she had a number of other luxuries, including servants, and she would eat expensive meals. But Jane Boleyn would also help the king sort out the problem of his fourth wife, Anne of Cleves, as she claimed that Anne and the king did not consummate their marriage, and then the king married his teenage mistress, Catherine Howard. But Jane Boleyn was now back in favour with the king, and because of this she became a senior lady-in-waiting for Catherine Howard. Henry's fifth wife, and because of this, she had a significant amount of influence over Catherine. But Catherine's past with men would come back to haunt her. She had been with men before, and this was considered not acceptable for a woman who would marry the king. But Catherine then began to have an affair with a man named Thomas Culpepper, the king's favoured courtier, and she had a lot in common with Culpepper. She had more in common with him than her husband, And whilst the court was on progress, she and Culpepper would sleep together, and these meetings were arranged and organised by Jane Boleyn. She organised the time the pair had together, and Catherine Howard would then be arrested, as would Jane Boleyn. It's not known why Jane Boleyn did this, but inside the Tower of London, Jane was imprisoned and interrogated by the King's men. But she had a nervous breakdown, and in 1542... She was then declared insane, as she had fits of frenzy. However, at this time, the king could not execute someone who was declared insane. But Henry VIII would change the laws of his nation to allow high treason to be subjected to the death penalty, even on those declared insane. Jane was sentenced to death, and her execution was then scheduled for the 13th of February, 1542. Inside the Tower of London, Her friend, Catherine Howard, was also beheld, and she was executed on a scaffold by an axeman. The scaffold was covered in the blood of Henry VIII's fifth wife, and it was not cleaned when Jane Boleyn was then brought out for her execution. The scaffold had been covered in hay to soak up Catherine's blood, but Jane was said to have been calm when she went to her execution. It was said that their souls must be with God, as they made the most godly and Christian end. It was said by a witness that Jane made a long speech to the crowd and she then apologised for her sins and then the executioner asked for Jane's forgiveness and she then knelt on the scaffold and then rested her head on the block. The executioner's axe then came crashing down and in one blow the head of Jane Boleyn was taken off and she was buried inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula in the Tower of London. But Jane Boleyn's reputation as a woman in history is rather interesting, as many believe that she was a woman whose comments led her to her husband's execution. Others say that she had been treated unfairly as the centuries rolled on, but she was a woman who helped Catherine Howard cheat on her husband, the king. But for this, she would have known that she could have faced the death penalty. But today she's laid to rest inside the Tower of London, along with her husband and her sister-in-law, under the altar of the chapel within the tower's walls. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.